Hey, and welcome to our new unit, and it's on what we call trigonometry. In trigonometry, to uh, metry means metric to apply measurement to, and trig means triangle. And so what we're studying is how we can uh, use right triangles to find missing sides and missing angles besides the Pythagorean theorem. And to start out with, I want you to say this little saying to yourself. It's a, a nice little short story. And it's some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. Now I know you're watching this at home and no one is around you. So say it out loud. Say it out loud to yourself. I want you to say this a couple times so it, it becomes part of you. Some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. And we'll come back to what this means <clears throat> in a little while. But let's talk a little bit about right triangles and some of the special characteristics of right triangles. I've got four right triangles drawn down here below. And I want to know how these triangles are all related to each other, besides the fact that they're yellow and besides the fact that they're right triangles. And one of the things you might notice is each one of these right triangles has a 30 degree angle. So if you think about the unit we just finished, you might come to this realization. All these triangles are similar to each other. And what do we know about similar triangles? Well, we know that their corresponding angles have to be equal. But more important than that, what about corresponding sides? Well, the corresponding sides must be proportional. They would have to be in the same proportion. And so what that means is if we look at any of these right triangles and we're standing, we're standing right here at this at this 30 degree angle, right where that smiley face guy is, that coming from 30 degrees, the ratio of the opposite side, and so this is coming from 30, that's the opposite side, the adjacent side, the side next to it, versus the hypotenuse, that these ratios, the ratio of the opposite to the adjacent side is the same for each triangle. It doesn't matter how big or small that triangle is, the ratio of the blue opposite to the red adjacent is the exact same ratio in all of these triangles. And the, the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse and the opposite side to the hypotenuse, those would be the same for each triangle. Size doesn't matter because we know the sides are proportional. And what I'm here to tell you is these ratios have all been stored in your calculator. You just need to learn how to retrieve them. So let's jump in and learn a little bit about trigonometry. So here's a right triangle and we're going to stand right here at this angle theta. Now you'll notice that we use the fancy Greek letter and in, in higher level mathematics we use Greek variables alpha, beta, theta, gamma um, to represent angles. So there are three special words that we're going to learn today, and these are all buttons that are on your calculator. You've just never used them before. The, these, these words are all functions, and because they're functions, and functions are relatively new to you, because they're functions, they don't exist on their own like numbers. They have to attach themselves somewhere. And what these trig functions, these trigonometric functions attach themselves to is an angle because that angle gives them a reference. So the angle theta means we're standing right here at this vertex and we're looking out at the opposite side, the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse. And so the first trigonometric function is the sine of an angle. Now on your calculator, this is abbreviated. Sine is abbreviated by S-I-N. So the sine of our angle, in this case we named our angle theta, represents a ratio. And the ratio it represents is the opposite side to the hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle, cosine of an angle, well cosine is abbreviated on your calculator as C-O-S. So again, being a function, it can't just exist by itself. It has to attach itself to something. And the cosine of an angle represents the ratio of the adjacent to the hypotenuse. And finally, our last trigonometric function that we're going to study is the tangent. And the tangent 
of, of an angle. Again, it's a function. It has to attach itself to, to an angle. That's abbreviated TAN. And these buttons, SIN, COS, and TAN, sine, cosine, and tangent, they're all in your calculator. And we'll learn how to use those in a minute. But the tangent function is the ratio of the opposite to the adjacent. And what I'm claiming is any right triangle that has an angle of theta degrees, whether theta is 20 degrees or 50 degrees or whatever, these ratios will be the same for every right triangle when you're standing at that theta angle. And a good way to remember these, these three trigonometric functions and these ratios is coming back to our horse story. Remember our horse story. Some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. Sine is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine, the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Well, let's dive in and see how this works, and then we'll kind of come back and make sure you understand why it works. So let's go to this problem here. I have a right triangle, and we want to find x and y. Now, being a right triangle, your first, your first strategy should be Pythagorean theorem. But in this case, we can't use the Pythagorean theorem because we would have to have two sides. We only have one. So this is where we can use trigonometry because we have an angle and we have a side. And since it's a right triangle, we can think of our three trig functions. Now, I, I always write this down for each problem. Some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. And so if we want to go after, let's just say, x first before the other ones, if we're standing right here at 40 degrees and we look out at x, we see that x is the opposite side. 16 is the hypotenuse. And so the trig function, standing at 40, that relates opposite to hypotenuse, well, that trig function would be opposite hypotenuse, that would be the sine function. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say that the sine of, now remember, sine is a function. It has to attach itself to an angle. That angle gives us a reference place, a place where we're standing. And in this case, we're standing right there. So the sine of 40 degrees is the opposite, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 16. So the very first thing that I need you to do whenever you're working these problems, whether it's in notes or homework or on a quiz or a test, is I want to see your initial trig equation. Then don't pick up your calculator yet. We're not going to pick up our calculators until we get the x all by itself. Now, another way to read this is the sine of 40 degrees is x, don't say over, divided by 16. And the way we get rid of division is multiplication. So if I multiply both sides here by 16, then these 16s cancel out, and I end up getting just x is equal to 16 times the sine of 40. So in each of these problems, what I want to see is your initial trigonometric equation. Did you use sine, cosine, or tangent? And what ratio did you set up? The second thing I have to see is what you're about to put in your calculator. And then you can go ahead and get your calculators out. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure my calculator is ready for this type of problem. And I'm going to go into my mode. And I'm going to check and make sure that my mode is in degrees mode. The calculator wants to be in something called radians, which we'll talk about later. But I'm going to go down and switch it to degrees mode. Now, if you're using a different type of calculator, let me show you how you can adjust that. So if your calculator looks like this, what you want to do is look right down here 
and see the word DEG, that means you're in degrees mode. And if you're not in degrees mode, there's this button somewhere in your calculator. It's DRG. And if you push it, it lets you switch from degrees to this thing you're going to learn about radians or to another thing that engineers use called gradients. And you can just arrow over, but we want to be in degrees mode. So once I'm in degrees mode, I'll just hit enter and I'm in degrees mode. So if you don't have, you know, a, a graphing calculator, that's how you can check and make sure your calculator is ready to hang, handle these angles. So let's take a look at putting this into our calculators. I'm going to pull up this calculator. I'm going to hit quit. And the nice thing about these graphing calculators is you can type this exactly as you see it. 16 times the sine of 40. And once you hit that, the calculator is going to give you the measure of X. And so we can see the X is 10.28. So right here, I'll just say X is about 10.28. Now, in this problem, we're supposed to find both X and Y. So let's go after Y. So standing where our angle is, standing here at 40 degrees, this time we're concerned with Y, and Y is an adjacent. Now, even though I know X is about 10.28, I, I, I'm not going to, I, I'm not going to use this value to find Y for two reasons. One, this is rounded, and, and so I don't want to use a rounded value to find Y. But two, if I happen to make a mistake finding X, that mistake would carry over when I was finding Y. So what I want to use is I want to use the 16 because I know that number has to be correct. So standing at the smiley face, we have an adjacent and a hypotenuse. And looking here at these choices, um, adjacent and hypotenuse, that's cosine. So down here, I'm going to say that, whoops, I'm going to say the cosine, ignore that. I'm going to say the cosine of 40 degrees is the adjacent, which is y, over or divided by the hypotenuse, which is 16. And again, in your homework, in your notes on quizzes and tests, I need to see this initial step. This step shows me which trig function you're working with, which angle it's attaching itself to, and it's showing me the ratio of the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Now, we need to solve for y. So before I get my calculator out, I have to figure out what I need to do to get y by itself. Well, this is y divided by 16. And the thing that undoes division is multiplication. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 16. And that would cancel out. And I would end up getting y equals 16 times the cosine of 40. So I go into my calculator. And I can type in 16 times the cosine of 40. And when I hit enter, I get 12.26. So y is about 12.26. Again, these trig functions of sine, cosine, and tangent help us stand at an angle and use the sides of a triangle to find any missing part, as long as it's a right triangle. So let's, let's go on and, and take a look at number two. Number two is this right triangle. There's no Y to find, just an X. So why don't you pause the video and try it yourself? Hey, welcome back. I hope you wrote out your some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. I also hope you stood where you needed to stand, which is right here at the 70 degrees, and you labeled this side next to 70 as the adjacent, and this side across from 70 as the opposite. And when you're looking for uh, which trig function relates these two, this opposite and adjacent, you'll see right here opposite and adjacent are related by tangent. So we can say the tangent of 70 equals the opposite over the adjacent. Solving for x, we get this, and when you dump it in your calculator, you get that. Now, go to part 
two.